Congratulations in order. Years in the making, the Bahamas government defied skeptics and today finally took control of the management and fee collection of its sovereign airspace, an arrangement that stands to pump millions of dollars into the local economy. Today, the Bahamas will assume for the first time the management of its sovereign airspace. An exuberant tourism and aviation minister, the Honorable Denisio Diagler, there at the ceremonial signing of an Air Navigation Services Agreement, a deal between the newly created Bahamas Air Navigation Services Authority and the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. And as U.S. Charge d'Affaires Yusha Pitts put it during her brief remarks, that's a big deal. You see, never before in the country's history has anyone paid anything to the government for use of its airspace. Not one red cent. Instead, that money was split at a ratio of 75 to 25, with the United States taking the lion's share and Cuba the remaining. But that arrangement changes immediately. Commencing the 1st of May 2021, aircraft landing in and departing out of the sovereign airspace of the Bahamas. Aircraft flying solely within the sovereign airspace of the Bahamas. And aircraft flying over the sovereign airspace of the Bahamas will start for the very first time to pay fees to an entity solely owned and operated by the government of the Bahamas. Diagler admits, though, that reaching this point was no easy feat. Before the Bahamas could operate its own flight information region, it needed to demonstrate to the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, that it had the ability to do so. It needed the resources to build the necessary air traffic control infrastructure and to hire and train the necessary air traffic controllers. There had to be a change in direction, a lengthy journey, that also addressed this issue. We do not have the infrastructure nor the capacity today to provide air traffic, air traffic control services above 6,000 feet in our sovereign airspace. So the, the agreement that we are signing today is for the FAA to provide that service on our behalf for the next 10 years, allowing us sufficient time to prepare ourselves to achieve our national aspiration of managing our own FIR. Funds collected from the users of our sovereign airspace will be used to cover the current operating costs of civil aviation in the Bahamas, but must also be used to build capacity. Joining the press conference virtually, the FAA's lead negotiator, Dave Burkholder, says Wednesday's signing marks a great sense of accomplishment. I think it's been a long road uh, over the many years that I referenced. Uh, we've had several stops and then restarts again. Uh, but really in 2017, uh, we had a declaration of intent where we um, uh, got together um, and really decided that we're going to, um, you know, do a, 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 a strong push to get you know, That's where uh, the entire uh, Bahamas team and the entire FAA teams uh, have uh, very diligently um, with the goal, common goal of getting this air navigation services agreement in place. Now, due to the ongoing COVID environment, the FAA signatories inked the agreement and annex in Washington this past Friday. Those documents were then couriered to the Bahamas for signing.